What is going on, everyone? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and we have got a really interesting video today. This one is going to be about some rare variants that I think you should be keeping an eye out for because they can have some significant value in them. There are a couple of them coming up in an upcoming heritage auction. They're actually being sold by one of the viewers of this channel. They had reached out to me about this and I thought this would be an interesting topic and it helps them with the sale of their books. So let's check these out. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So the reason I thought that this would be a really interesting video to make is because these are the types of books that I think that you could come across at antique shops, flea markets, that kind of thing. And you may not really know what you're looking at unless you actually have this little bit of information, you know, like tucked in the back of your head and you go like, oh, I remember these books can potentially have a lot of value. Maybe I want to look into them a little bit more. We're going to go into these here. And like I said, there's some serious value to some of the variants as well as just some of the regular issues for these books. These are Silver Age books. Uh, they're ones that you might not come across all that often, but they're ones that I started learning about when I first got back into comics just by accident. I was watching a kind of like a monster prop auction on Heritage, and they had a few of these uh, these magazines that were in that auction. And I, I bought a couple of them and turned out that there is a pretty strong collector base for them. So definitely something that you want to have that knowledge of. So let's get into these. The magazines that we're talking about, and it was, should be on the thumbnail. So you should know what I'm talking about here, but our famous monsters of film land. And so this is from Warren publishing and started in the late fifties. So kind of like a silver age magazine. And like I said earlier, there is a pretty serious collector base for this. I mean, monsters are popular. So this is just kind of a tangential collection or collector item from monsters. And if you're not familiar with Famous Monsters of Filmland, uh, the magazines, I mean, I have one right here. This is issue number nine. This is one that I picked up during a, a live claim sale on, on Instagram. I'm actually going to show the interior of that a little bit later just to kind of show you where you might want to look for one of the variants. So the first one here is issue number one. Now I'm just going to talk about this one because this is one of the most well-known issues. It's got the Frankenstein cover. There's a lot of value just because it is that issue number one. Uh, and if we jump over to the CGC forums, there, is, there are groups that are dedicated to famous monsters of film land. And like I said, there's a pretty serious collector base around them. And one of the things that, that this uh, poster commented on was they said, uh, equally ironic is the fact that although Famous Monsters number one is one of the most sought after issues of the magazine, it is also the issue with the highest number of copies printed. So there's a lot more of them, but it has a lot of value because a lot of people want it. And so if we look at Famous Monsters of Filmland number one, uh, this issue that's up for sale this uh, in this auction. And so that's this coming week. So it should sell on June 24th, which is Monday. These are Silver Age. I believe they should sell Monday, so June 24th. But in 8.0, you can see Last sale for an 8 of issue number one, 1800 bucks. We had a 7 go for 2300 in March. We had in 2022 an 8-5 go for 1440 So I think this is approximately a $2,000 book. And so just something to be aware of. I mean, even look at the lower grades. I mean, you have lower grade copies, 3-0 for 153 but like a 4-5, 350 5 375 a 5-5 went for 1365 That's super high. Uh, but just the idea of why it's important to have this bit of knowledge and know to look for these books. All right, now the other thing that was mentioned, and this is where we're getting into the variants in this post, was about the rare variants that are out there for Famous Monsters of Filmland that people like to collect. So it does say the rarest, but it's actually not the rarest because they correct that kind of later in the same post. But this is the rarest issue of Famous Monsters this is the number six variant with the MT Graves sticker. Uh, these were only distributed in the Miami area. We'll get into that. Only five to six known legitimate copies and out there and they rarely, if ever, come to market. Actually, on GPA, on GoCollect, there are no recorded public sales of the MT Graves variant. But I've got a picture, so I'll show you what you need to look for. Then you've got, uh, the next one is Famous Monsters number four, the Ghoul's Eye sticker. This one, to me, is like the coolest cover from the early Famous Monsters book. So not only does it have the cool cover, it's got this variant that adds a significant amount of value to the book. We'll go over that one. Then it says the Holy Grail. And maybe the reason that he doesn't call this a variant is because this, this one isn't an actual different version of the book. It's a stamp in the book. 
So the holy grail of all famous monsters of Filmland magazines is Famous Monsters number seven with the lucky seven printed on one of the pages. And so the thing with that is that there were no copies known to exist with this. If you check a number of different forums and pages and things, a lot of people think like maybe it was just a joke, like that the publisher had said, oh yeah, we put these out there just to get people to buy the magazine. But one finally popped up and this, the, the watcher of this channel had it and he got it graded and it is in this auction. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what that book ultimately sells for. We'll get into why that copy is so rare in a little bit when we get to that comic. So now let's jump to the first one here because I want to give you an idea of how much value these variants can add to the book. So this is issue number four. Like I said, I think it's such a cool cover. They actually use the same cover in a later issue as well. So don't let that fool you. Uh, issue number four, it'll say issue four on the cover. The later one will have a different issue. But this specific copy has this Ride the Ghoul's Eye sticker here. So if we go to GPA and we go to issue number four, you get an idea of just what the difference is and what you would be looking for. Now, it's still a pretty expensive book, regardless, partly because it's such a cool cover. You can see a 5.0 went for 691 just in March, and that's the standard copy. And if we look at the standard copy, you can see here, no sticker. There's no sticker on that cover. The one that's in this auction has this big orange ride the ghoul's eye. Now, don't let the, the name fool you. It is not a very exciting ride. When I, I saw a picture of it, there's one that was either on the CGC forum somewhere or something, and it basically looks almost like a merry-go-round, like a fancy merry-go-round. <laughs> so it's probably not that, that great of a ride or wasn't that great of a ride, but the, the sticker does add a significant amount of value to this book. And so if we look at, at GPA for this, like I said, you can see a 5.0 went for 691, but look what the ghoul's eye copies go for. In 2021, 3,000 for a 5.5, 2,000 for a 5.0, a 4.0 in 2022 went for almost 1,800. You had a 2.0 that went for 355, going up into some higher grades here. A 7.0 went for 5,000 in 2021. So this is a variant that will add anywhere from like five to 10 times to the value of this book. And so that's why it's just good to know about. I mean, if you find one of these anyway, there's a lot of value, but if you find one with that sticker, there is a lot more. So just keep an eye out for that one. Now, the next one we're gonna talk about is that Lucky Seven copy. So this is the Lucky Seven copy. It's actually a great looking book. It is a 2-0, which, you know, that's the question, how much is that gonna hurt the value? But it's a one of one. It is the only known copy to exist with this stamp in it. And so it's a 2-0, it has a split spine, but is a great presenting 2-0. And you can see on the label here, it says Lucky 7 Stamp on 17th page. And so I asked the seller, you know, the watcher of the channel about this. And he said that Heritage did check with CGC. There are no other known copies that they graded because this isn't differentiated on the census. The same with the Ghoul's Eye, same with the MT Graves sticker for issue number six that isn't designated on the census. So you just have to kind of know what's out there. But it does say here in the notes as well, uh, Lucky 7 stamp on 17th page, currently the only known copy with the Lucky 7 stamp still in the magazine. So what that means there, or, or why this is so rare, is that what Warren did was they, in this issue, they put the stamp in the book. And if you came across it, if you were lucky enough to buy one that had that stamp, if you tore that out and mailed it back to them, you got a free lifetime subscription to the magazine. And so you can imagine that anybody that came across that was going to tear that page out and get their free lifetime subscription. And so that is why this is so rare to actually have one that still has this stamp on the interior page. And now the other interesting thing was I asked him if he had, had taken a picture of it before he got it slabbed and he hadn't, but I got the details on what it looks like, where it's located so that you can know what to look for because what he told me actually really surprised me. I was expecting like a big stamp either in the center of the page or the margin, something that was very obvious. But he said this stamp was a quarter inch long, an eighth of an inch tall. When he first saw it, he thought it was just a date stamp that was for some reason on the inside of the book. And it was on the interior margin. So the margin along the spine of the book. So it's in a place that would not be, you would not readily check necessarily. And it's very small. And he said he he took out a ruler and checked it. He said it was a quarter of an inch long. I think it is a very small stamp because I was surprised that that's all it was. You know, I mean, this is like, it's like this. 
You know, that is how big that Lucky 7 stamp was. He also said it was kind of a rusty color. It looked like it was a probably a red stamp, and that just had aged over time and turned to this rusty color. So if you are looking for this, if you have a copy of issue number seven, if you come across a copy of issue number seven, I can't guarantee it's going to be on the 17th page. Maybe they put it on random places in the book, but this was that's how small the stamp was. That's what you're looking for. Uh, and like I said, I've got a copy of issue number nine right here. And just so I can kind of show you what you, you might be looking for with respect to the margin, if you've never seen the interior of one of these, I mean, so what this, it's basically, it's a magazine. It's got articles and pictures and all kinds of stuff. And so here we go. So if you look on the kind of like an interior page, like that interior margin there, you know, like in the middle, that's where the stamp was. And so not something that you would necessarily notice, you know, could pretty easily miss that, I think. And so it's, it could be possible that, you know, people were looking, maybe they've been looking for something that's a lot bigger. And so maybe they're, you know, maybe someone comes across another one, but I mean, it's, people have been looking for these. I mean, that, that CGC page is from 2011 and there's a newer one where someone posted about the, this book coming up for sale. And there still are no known copies. So they've been looking for these. Like people have been trying to find them. And this is the first time anyone has ever found a copy that has that stamp. But that's what you would be looking for. All right. So now we're going to go back to the, to the book here. So you can see that it could be very easy for someone to miss that stamp. You've got that, you know, the little margin there. It's a really small stamp, just a quarter of an inch long by an eighth of an inch tall. And so I could see someone potentially missing it. Maybe there's another one out there. Maybe people were thinking that it was a big stamp like I was thinking. And they were just, you know, you're flipping through thinking you're going to see some big thing that says Lucky 7. But it's actually like a, like a date stamp type stamp and even maybe a little smaller than that. Now, what would this book maybe sell for? It's tough to say. Uh, you know, is it going to get that type of 5 to 10x multiple? Is it going to be more because it's a one of one? It's the only known copy out there of this. And if we go to issue number seven kind of see what issue number seven sells for. And I mean, it's all over the place. You've got five, five for 43, a five Oh for two twenty five, a two Oh for one twenty. but the one of one, what's that multiple going to be? That's, that's up to the collector community to decide. And I would not be surprised if there's some people on that CGC forum, they're going to be bidding for this thing because like, like it said in that post, this is effectively the grail of famous monster of Filmland books because they're just nobody thought they existed. There were actually a lot of people that thought it was just a marketing ploy by Warren and that none were ever given that stamp. And it was just to make people go try to look for them so that they'd buy them, hoping they'd find that stamp and get that free lifetime subscription. But sadly, they never did. Uh, but apparently people probably did because there's none out there that are known other than this copy. All right. So now. Let's jump on to the next book here. This is the considered the next rarest, I guess. So this is the M.T. Graves copy. Now, this one is not that variant. I'll show you a picture of that variant. This is Famous, Famous Monsters of Filmland number six. And the M.T. Graves variant is this one. So this is what it would look like. It would have this uh, C7 Sunday for M.T. Graves in the dungeon, WCKT slash Miami. So what this was, was this was a TV show that played in the Miami market. And so this issue with this, this specific uh, variant was only distributed in the Miami market. That's why it's so rare. So if you are in the Southern Florida area, you know, or just Southern US like Georgia or anything like that, where they might've gotten around to, that's what you want to keep an eye out for. You want to look for this because you saw what the multiple was for that ghoul's eye issue. So this could definitely go for more than that, you know, a bigger multiple than that, considering it appears they are much more rare than the ghoul's eye issue. But this was the TV show. You know, you can see here the dungeon. It's on IMDb. Uh, was hosted a uh, hosted horror movie show with Charlie Baxter's MT Graves presenting movies on Sunday afternoon around 4 p.m. on WCKT, Channel 7, Miami, Florida. So, you know, all the stuff that's on that sticker. And if you go over to Go Collect, you can see that none of them had ever sold, at least publicly that had been pulled in here. You go through all the images, none of them have that little orange sticker down in the corner. You can go to the second page of images, and again, none of these have 
that that orange sticker. So it's never been a public sale. So it's hard to say what it would go for, but I imagine a five to 10 X multiple of the price. Uh, and you can see that that issue number six here is already a pretty expensive book. Like a seven, five went for 900. This one is an eight O this is an eight O copy. So it's a good chance that it goes for 800 to a thousand dollars, somewhere in that range, maybe more. Um, but yeah, expensive book. And if it got that type of multiple, obviously even more, especially when one has never sold publicly before. All right. Now, the last book I wanted to talk about was just one of the high grade copies that was in this, because that's one of the interesting things, too, with these famous Monsters of Filmland books. They're, they're a lot like Golden Age books. You don't come across high grade copies very often. And there's an issue number eight, which I just think I picked this one because I think it's a pretty cool cover. I have owned a copy of this one before. Issue number eight in a 9 with I believe white pages. Yeah. So yeah, white pages. So 9 white page copy, great presenting copy, but it's a super creepy cover. I mean, you got this, whatever this creepy monster guy is. And then this is supposed to be, I'm guessing like an angel on his shoulder, but a super creepy angel, you know, with the harp and the halo and everything. But yeah, so this one's a 9 for issue number eight. So if we go check out issue number eight here and just kind of get an idea what these might go for. So a 9 last sale 660 in 2020, uh, high sale ever 2015 for 777. So, you know, might be going between 700 and a thousand dollars, something like that. But that's why these books, they're important to keep an eye out for. You never know what you might find out there and you may find a serious amount of value in some of these, uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland books. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. I wanted to make this one uh, because I just thought it was really interesting to see these uh, these variants that are out there. And just that, that having that bit of knowledge in the back of your head, so you just you remember if you come across it that, oh, this thing potentially has a lot of value. If you see it, like I said, in like a thrift shop or an antique show, flea market, that kind of thing. She got the Ghoul's Eye, which similar to Empty Graves, this is a local distribution. It was only around that amusement park. That's why it's so rare. The Ghoul's Eye copy, you've got the Lucky Seven. You know, like I said, it's that small stamp, just a quarter inch long by an eighth of an inch uh, tall, kind of like a red, rusty red color. And this one, at least in this copy, was on the interior margin. So just that's what you'd be looking for with this one. And then you've got the uh, issue number six with the Empty Graves variant that looks like this here. So that's what you'd be looking for that one. But yeah, good luck to the seller. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully his books go for a bunch of money, and you know he does real well in this in this sale. Like I said, it's a niche collector market for famous monster filmland, but especially when you have certain types of books, whether it's high grade early issues or these variants, there's a lot of demand for them. So hopefully, you know, someone out there comes across one of these in the wild out there someday, and they're able to use this knowledge, you know, to help pick that up. And I will see you on the next one.